Evening everyone. Don't mind me just quickly cleaning up a little bit some pieces before we get started. Okay. So I need to have a look at this. So um, I had a hard drive come in today that was completely dead, external portable. And uh, the poor person was freaking out because, you know, nothing would work. And I said to him, well, it's actually better that uh, for the external portable that it's completely dead. No lights or anything, because it usually means there's something wrong with the bridge side of it. Assuming that the drive has a separate bridge as opposed to the awful Western Digital ones, which have the integrated bridge. So, let's see. Oh, yeah. Well, that explains that then. Looks like someone just smooshed it. Nice shear job on that connector. Interestingly, with it sheared like that, if you were truly desperate and you couldn't open up the case, you should be able to put just a standard, um, uh, let's see, USB mini connector on there. But in this particular one, it probably wouldn't have worked because this was a five terabyte drive. So it had a fairly high power consumption requirement which would not have been met by what this could deliver, so I did need the full width. Anyway, it's fixed now, as in I'm just recovering it on my recovery server and got all the data off. So that's all good. Just throw that in the bin, really. There you go. I was wondering what was causing that to fail. Hey, RTC, Barry, Jason's, DJ, Travis, John, Cecilia. My apologies to all those who are missed in that first pass. And we've had some bad news. The, um, let's see, that uh, 820163 board, the one that we had to battle around with, and we found it to be, what was it, the, um, the battery that needed replacing, amongst other things. I got that out of the ultrasonic cleaner today, and it um, three beeped at me, and that's it. <laughs> Dead. I'm not going to bother trying fixing that because more than likely three beeps on those things it's PCH or something like that. It's just it's a rabbit hole. I've got to walk away from that one. I can get the data. It's not a major problem. All right. Oh, and the 1425 still hasn't come back. That's completely dead. Oh hell! Is this going to bend it? This is a Google Pixel. Never open one of these. Can they be opened? Oh, I suppose they can, but supposedly the problem with this is, I'm assuming that's USB-C. Um, they plugged it in, it got hot and died. Well, it does respond. It keeps resetting here. I think they've just botched up that connector is really flaky. I mean, really flaky. Now, I think they might have mangled up the... No, it's working. It's just a mangled up connector. So it's drawing five watts at the moment. Just realised it's probably going to reveal information that's not meant to. Come on. Ah. And okay, it looks like it's actually loop boot looping. See if it's getting warm anywhere. Just seems to be going around in this. So how do you open these things up? Yeah. PR, electro type, electro lab rather. Oh, this thing is just going around in a loop. 
the bend in it is what concerns me. I have a feeling it's probably damaged ram or something like that. Ah, I got a something in my eye. Anyway, oh, that's different. Is it actually a bend or is that design? Yeah, it's a bend. Jim. Okay, so which pixel is this one? Phone is Google. No idea. Can't read it. TPW4100 Let's have a look at the disassembly guide if there is even one I fix it Apparently it's mm, mm, not the easiest. Uh, let's see, so we've got to heat the edge, uh, heat the display, great, okay. Wait, they just say heat the edges of the display. In the following steps you'll separate the display, slicing through the adhesive bonding the display to the chassis. In the following steps, right. They don't really give much of a guide, they just sort of like heat it and shuck that thing open. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I sort of gathered that. Looks like there's not a lot of de depth to play with. It looks like it's about one and a half millimeters. That's almost nothing. Uh, where's my IEC cable? I think I threw out about a dozen IEC cables the other day. I'm just like, what do I need them for? Well, apparently the answer is I need them to do this job. Ah, uh, come on. I've got the stupid laptop ones. Should have been one hanging up on the ceiling. Wait, wait, wait. We have a winner. Right. We have a winner. Now, the question is, what temperature do I even run this at? It's, uh, We'll just do it 70. Yep, we'll do it 70 for now. Ah, uh, Travis, I'll have to find myself plenty more room to do that sort of thing. Uh, let's see, alright, so there's... So it looks like it hinges from the top, or well the hinge is down the bottom rather, or the cable is. And looks like I need some sort of suction gripper. Not like that. that should do the trick.
Hey Colonel Panic. Good name you got there. Great time to turn up when I'm doing something that I've never done before. So bravo to you. Okay, so I'm going to whittle this down a little bit. Give me a finer edge. Should be good. Um, I really probably... Another six weeks or so. Yeah, I'd say another six weeks before I get access. And even then, that's going to be partial. It's going to be one of those things that takes time. And that was the sound of everything snapping. Oh, wait, you're alive. The heat has brought you back to life. Naturally, I don't have a passcode. <laughs> I don't get it. What is? What's this phone doing here? I'm not pulling it apart now. Hey, Dennis. Oh my lord! That is a seriously messed up USB-C port. This is why I don't like the USB-C port. Because really, this is the sort of damage you're going to expect, but you'd prefer to have that on a cable that you can replace. That is mashed up to hell. Alright, that's it. I'm, I'm not touching that until I get their passcode, which should be somewhere around here. That can wait. I think it's just... The port's jacked up. And I'm not going to replace that. I'm just going to get the data off in the end. Alright, let's go to the Dell. Yeah, it may not be too hard if you do it every day, but for me... No. Uh, you're the stupid miniature Dell connector and you didn't give me the charge port. Why is it that when you don't need the charger brick, people supply you a charger brick, and when the times you do need a charger brick, they don't? Uh, I am 99.9 .9 recurring percent sure I do not have that particular charge brick here. I think I. It's foolish enough. Yep, it's definitely not that. I don't know if anything's compatible. Compatible. I mean, I've got a bunch of power bricks, but I don't think anything's going to fit that Dell one. This is turning into a real suck face of a night. Damn it, God. Let's see if I can at least find out what it was that they mentioned about it. Phone overheated and haven't been able to turn it on since. Phone now works after I heated it. Laptop ran out of power last week, midway through a movie. Tried a few cords, but can't get it to start up. Oh, great. So, <laughs> okay, so part of the problem is the cords, and I don't get a cord supplied with it. Damn it. Hey, Miles. 
Alright, does anyone know if there is something compatible with this particular small Dell power connector? It's not the more typical one that we get, which is you know, the um, 9mm diameter one. The nice solid one. The one that gives you confidence when you plug it in that it's going to actually do something. Alright, now I'm going to shuffle trash around in here. Come on. Yep, that's it. Blow a hernia. HP mini power tip. But it won't charge. Oh, okay. What about a Lenovo? That's not going to work. No. I'm pretty sure I've got a bunch of the HP ones. You're talking about the blue open cylinder ones? Yeah, okay, that's it, yeah. Yeah, so this is the HP one. Now, I just don't very often encounter the Dell gear anymore, at least not the newer ones. <laughs> Pardon me. It's mostly HP and Toshiba and Acer and stuff like that. Okay, we're not getting indicator light. Oh, it looks like what it. Okay, we've got indicator light coming up. Oh, it did momentarily. Caplox is alive. Alright, so it seems to come up for about three seconds and then die. That's an SMC we need to reball. Alright, let's tear this one down. Let's see how they try to go for the fake MacBook look. So Phillips. And the least they could do is use Torx. Hey Eddie Painter. I mean I personally don't have a problem with H uh, Dell laptops when I mean, it's they all seem much and much and they seem to do good on the support side. Interesting, these screws have actually, these bottom screws, they've got the expanded thread on the um, underside, so you can't actually pull them out. At least not without forcibly recutting a thread in the plastic. Yeah, Crazy J, let's hope it's not like that, eh? I'm not doing 144, you sort that out. Hey Greg. Looks like someone's already split it for me. Well, according to YouTube, everything's good on this side.
Uh, who knows? Ah, uh, Steve Cave, I'm so sorry. It should be 8k for you. Yeah. Hey, Andre. Yes, it certainly is a funny looking MacBook. Okay, batteries are disconnected. Oh, how cute. <sighs> Nice, they even included the SATA adapter in this one. I really am not a fan of these SSD modules. Not a fan at all. The jack was slightly pulled out there. Like the cable here maybe felt a bit short. But I don't think it would have been enough to cause that sort of issue that we were seeing. Yeah, still fires up for a couple of seconds and shuts down. Right, I gotta admit, not really sure what I'm gonna be looking for on this one. Yeah, I'm finding I'm getting a number of these coming in completely dead. I'm not surprised. They look like they probably get thrashed to death. Well, the fan does spin, so, and normally what would happen if you've got a clogged fan or stuff like that, the BIOS would warn you. You know, say your fan's not operating properly, um, press F1 to continue or you know, restart, things like that. Normally they'll report the situation rather than just blindly shutting down on you. Common is the Palm Rest Flex made it. Chip BGA come off. Are you referring to this model or something else? These modules are only good for taking your data and running with it forever. Like your best friend who said he had no interest in your girlfriend, but when your back was turned they ran off together and lived happily ever after. Dust bunny. No, they're, they're not like Optane. These are genuine SSD, you know, M2, uh, or is this a PCI? Yeah, this is a PCI Express Gen 3 X2 NVMe. But I do wonder about how the actual mem uh, storage module holds up. Just seems like a little bit too packed in on one chip. Considering that's a, what is that, 256? That's a 128. I've got another machine that's got a 256 gig on it. It just feels like something's got to give.
At least this isn't a stacked motherboard like that other tough computer that we had the horrors of dealing with. I've still got to put that thing together. <laughs> it's one of those situations where you end up wanting to pay the person who sent it to you money just so you don't have to put it back together. It's like, I'll give you 50 bucks so I don't have to put it back together. <laughs> And we are free. The board's a bit on the thin side. Feels more like about 1.2, definitely not 1.6 mil PCB, I don't think. Could be the touch screen have had that happen. Well, we'll have a look. I really don't know what I'm going to encounter. I've never seen one of these before. I'll just start looking. Let's see if we can find any blatant. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, smoking gun. If we can't, then we'll just go. No luck. And then offer to take the data off that pitiful SSD for them and put it onto an external drive or something. Because I don't want to be spending more than 20 minutes on this. I'm already used up. But okay, we've got the dreaded ants in here. Okay, so we may find something around the place. Camera is blurry. Actually, it is picking up a light source from somewhere. Camera glitches sometimes. Yeah, you're going to have to live with it. I mean, who do you think I am? Dave Jones and getting heaps of free gear or something? No siree. Yeah, screen's tearing. Yes, I know. God damn, you people won't shut up, will you? Can't do anything about it. I like it how tearing turns into blurry. It's the joyous thing with users. Is that they'll always give you very comprehensive reports incorrectly worded. Yeah, it's probably the capture dongle. I am saving up for a mage world. There's going to be some big bickies. Arnold, I'm not sure yet. haven't looked. I'm just giving my first visuals because quite honestly, if I get to the point where I need the schematic and board view, I probably don't want to do this job. I think it's just going to be a case of write it off as a... Um, yeah, just not worth it. What I will do is maybe give it the infrared camera treatment. See if anything fires up hot. And if not, we'll say goodbye. So I've got one ant and that was about it. So there's a little bit of 
scum there. Alright, we'll, we'll get the model number. I'm guessing this is it. There you go. Not sure if that's what you're after. Now the only thing I'll be looking for, if you can point me the way to the on off switch. Let me guess, that's going to be part of the keyboard assembly, isn't it? Isn't it? What's the bet? It's going to be part of the keyboard. Hey, Mohammed. Yeah, all I really want to find is the on off button so that I can at least try see if it will stay on for more than three seconds. Basil. Under the, under the ram. That's a beautiful place to put it. You're kidding. They, they put it under here? It's a lot of BS. Well, Steve, we can't get the board views yet. Some of the oh, great. See if I can't find it myself floating around here somewhere. Ninety watt version of the power supply. Uh, Steve, um, I don't know. I don't even know if they're going to. There's a bit of an issue that I was talking to Lewis about, and that is that a lot of the designers uh, and manufacturers get a bit confused when we say board view they're thinking design file but it's not Why can't there just be like a cap with all its all its glorious internals cracked and showing off to the world, letting us know that I am the problem. 
Okay. Yeah, Greg, I saw that. Um, Jim linked me into it. Oof. How am I supposed to download this? Ah, download. I love it how they try to force you to have to use their damn downloader. It's like, no, just download it. Alright, Arnold G, let's see what we can do with what you've given here. You're a terrible man, you didn't put that in a separate folder. CAD should work, in theory. And, okay, it's, it's a little shonky compared to what we're used to with MacBooks, but it is working. wonder what notation they use for things like um, you know, on off I guess we'll look at the keyboard KV detect no maybe it is a separate switch and I'm just not sure uh, it's coming off the damn daughter board that's why and that goes in via the large, this large, this here. Power button. And it looks like we might be able to. This here. Oh, whoops, can't see that. Yeah, this TP eleven seventeen eleven. So they don't seem to use the same no numbers here. No, it's okay. The, the, I've got the numbers I want there, so I'll give it a shot. I'll try to short those, and hopefully things don't go kablammy. What is so so ant earlier in a chip leg towards the middle? Oh boy. Well, I'll see if I can just fire this up first. Let's see if it even does the anticipated job. Or if it just goes blam and I become electro boom for a few seconds.
Oh great, now the light's on. Oh. It was momentarily on. And the button doesn't seem to do squat. Oh, there we go. Okay, the first thing I'll get is some heat here, which is CPU. Okay, I'm gonna. This is gonna be awkward, but we're gonna do it because apparently I'm trying to be nice. Interesting that only two phases of firing up there and then fading out. So like the third phase doesn't want to come up. I'll see if there's a button on the other side. Actually, maybe the, maybe that's not even CPU related. So 4802 and 4801 were running, but 4701 was not. But it doesn't look like it's. Let's see. Hmm. It seems like it has a different function. Yeah, you see these two here. We're working together. One V CPU core. And that's something else. Right. Okay, fair enough. Now what I want to see is if this yeah, all we have is pin nine. And we need to short that to a ground somewhere. That's a pretty risky move. Now, why would I look for a fuse? Oh, hell no. I suppose I can actually short it to this frame here. <laughs> it's a bit risky, so it's a bit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, that's that's kind of pushing my luck a bit. Maybe. No. I'll give it one more visual, but I think we're just not gonna bother with this one. Got a cough. I can't tell what the power consumption is like because this is running off an adapter. But yeah, unfortunately they've only put the power activation button on the one side of the board rather than both sides of the board. It's very handy to have it on both sides of the board. But this just looks like it's a waste of time now. The mic was deliberately dead while I was coughing. Um, the MP having a bit of a tricky time measuring that because it only appears for a short moment, but yeah, we'll, we'll give it a look.
6.8 volts. Uh, so 0.8. No, I'm putting this one back together, I'm, I'm done with it. When it comes to these machines, really for the most part, unless it's something physically visible, like a blown cap or a bit of corrosion, then it's very quickly going to become a time waste. It's different for the MacBooks on the basis of the fact that you know you do have a significantly smaller number of different machines. I mean, don't get me wrong; there's enough of them already, but yeah, you have a chance of getting used to some of the idiosyncrasies. Whereas with these PCs, it you just don't get exposed to enough of the same ones enough times to make it something worth investing into and the churn of the models is just phenomenally quick about the only ones that I did put any real effort into were the Toshiba series It could be a power brick issue as well. It wouldn't hurt for me to go and buy myself a full 90 watt type unit or whatever is the maximum for this particular series of connector. Try the BIOS at least. No pass. Seriously, it's just not worth it. I'll try, I'll buy a power brick simply because I should have a power brick on hand. But aside from that, I'm not doing anything more. I've really, really got to put more effort into saying no to certain jobs and saying no sooner when a certain job isn't going smoothly. Because all that happens is that my queue just builds up with junk that I can't fix or won't be fixed or whatever. And that means I can't take on new jobs, like I had to turn away a couple today. And the new jobs could be the ones that actually have the money available. So yeah, I'm only hurting myself. Yeah, that's a good way of killing it. I'll leave this out so that I can recover the data for them. Since we've already pretty much declared this as a no fix. Yeah, so I don't expect people to understand the business choices made. Yeah, if you're not running a business yourself, then it doesn't always make sense. If you're doing it for fun as a hobby and stuff like that, then yeah, I mean, it can be fun to chase these things, but I've been doing things like that for too long. Did someone kill Hiron? Why do people even want to get shout outs like that? It just seems weird, especially with someone as relatively unpopular as myself. Yeah, I can understand if, say, you got Rossman and his million and a half followers, but 
Me doesn't make any sense. Warren, I used to have one of those and they drove me mad. I mean, they seem some people like them, but yeah, they drive me mad. Why do I get the feeling I was supposed to actually? Right. When I first started getting back into computer repairs, I did buy myself a couple of those multi-tip ones. But it wasn't long before I found myself needing to have to get a genuine one of one brand or another. So in the end, it was easier just to have the four bricks. So like Acer, Asus, Toshiba, HP, AK5, um, or six, Lenovo, Dell. And at least then you could do multiple jobs concurrently. No, there's no screw to be have there, buddy. Karen Tipper, with Lewis moving away from doing repairs, you could get more subscribers. I could, but not quite as... Um, not quite as divisive, uh, di yeah. I don't quite draw the same sort of attention that Lewis does, and I'm not trying to. I think it sort of, I don't have that kind of personality. I'm not really one to seek, sort of, to stir the pot or create uh, controversy. If I do create controversy, it's only because I believe in something and maybe other people don't but it won't be because I'm actively trying to do it it would be much better to power with bench power so well MP I do do that with most of my other stuff but in this particular case I didn't you'll notice MP up the top here there's all the multimeter and bench power supply stuff but in this particular instance we didn't really have that tip on a cord available and we're not really going to bother. You can get yourself, you can buy yourself a replacement one of these for less than what it would probably cost me to service it. That's just the reality of it. Did I connect the battery? I did. That's already done. Yeah, exactly, Tony. Yeah. I mean, you go to any of those government, ex government refurb sites and you, know, you pick something like this up for 120 bucks, maybe less maybe 50 bucks it's just not really possible to justify anymore the macbooks at least you can because they do cost a fair bit even now but everything else psh, not much chance I was hoping maybe more it would be for entertainment value as it were. Turns out it was not. Fortunately, the night is not over. We do have a MacBook and we've got an SMC Reball to still do. Yeah, it could be the BIOS, but it could also not be the BIOS. That's the thing. You've got to play the paranoid game rather than the hopeful game. And sure, there may be a few jobs that I toss out that could have been easily fixed. 
but I find that's a psychological trap that ends up wasting your time and money. Better to let those go and someone else who yeah, wants to put that sort of time in it, let it go to them, then they can at least capitalize on, on that. But uh, like I said, I've got my queues just getting too big. It's time to start culling before too long. <coughs> All right, what have we got for tonight on the MacBook scene? Looks like we've got Batman. thing is it's always more than just five minutes I'm getting to the point in life where if people say to me if someone comes up to me and says oh mate it's just gonna be a five minute job can you do it and it's like oh okay you're qualified to know which is why you're bringing it around to me I really just want to punch those people in the face knock them out for 30 minutes and tell them it was only well just you know put a put a lighter under the under there are uh, the arch of their foot for only five minutes and really it's 30 minutes people do not have suitable respect for time other people's time they're happy to you to waste your way blah, blah, blah. they're happy for you to waste your time because it's only five minutes but i can guarantee you tables turned around they'll wail and they will squeal like anything if you chew up more than a few seconds of their time you ruined my son's weekend at the soccer because you took longer than two days to service the laptop. How dare you? You're going to compensate me. My boy's got emotional damages now. Yeah, stuff like that. It's like, nah. And for whatever reason, industries like the IT industry fall foul of um, playing guilty to that or letting that even happen I mean, you try that with a lawyer or a doctor good luck with that <sighs> you know, established industries they'll just tell you to go kick rocks ok so battery is replaced with a compatible model from iFixit tried without keyboard and trackpad try and try SMC reset won't power on is there a formula to get those stickers off it should just peel off yeah, these stickers, they should just peel off. Okay, so this is an iFixit battery. Okay. Let's get the mag safe in and see what it's got to say for itself. Where, oh where. Samsung drive, bad news. Let's get my chipmunk out. Okay, yeah, we do get power up. Now this is a 2015, it'll be a 4924 board. It's not going to spin the fan. Oh no, not good. You are booting. All right, okay, so what we can hope for in this scenario, since all of a sudden now it's working, since it's been shipped, is that we've got a bit of corrosion on the backside somewhere. Better to clean circuit boards. Acetone, non acetone. Oh, never acetone. Um, it depends what you're trying to clean up. If it's anything that's water based, like um, cereal or anything that's soluble potentially in water, use something like 80 20 percent. So 80 percent IPA, 20 percent water, stuff like that. And then when you've come to clean the flux that's when you use 100 percent rpa okay just shut that down if you try to clean a lot of the junk with just straight isopropylene or ethanol most of the time it will refuse to come off very cleanly 
because a lot of the stuff that gets into these machine machines is not actually water soluble. Oh, sorry, not actually alcohol soluble, but it is water soluble. Oh, there you go. I'm just looking for my T5. There it is. First thing to do, remove the battery. Second thing to do, remove the client's data. So there's no risk. And always put a sticker on it. So that if you get separated from your buddy computer, we will know who you belong to. It's a very clean machine. What am I doing? I'm just trying to think of the what could possibly where the corrosion could be. Yeah, they might have had a dead charger, but yeah. I'm sure they might have at least checked with another one, a spare or something like that. Particularly if they've gone all the way to get an I fix it. Battery pack to replace theirs. We'll find out. We'll take the board out and have a look because, like I said, we've had a few other streams where machines turn up and they're all running fine, even though the person has said that they were not running when they sent it and it turns out to be a nice little juicy chunk of corrosion sitting off something the shipping process makes a corrosion crack it no longer has the power over the chip that held it down before <sighs> and escapes David Bowie's goblin complex because it has no power over me anymore Although I suppose modern people prefer to use Lord of the Rings reference for that one. Gained off the grey. Phillips. With these machines, if you do repair any of the um, these 1502 types, don't try and take the fan out like separately. Leave it attached to the main board, and you just pull out the whole assembly. The only other option you'll have is to take the heat sink off, and most people don't really care to do that. But yeah. yeah. Just lift that up. There we go. glasses off and let's have our inspection. We're going to start with the back side. A bit of weird crack there but not what I'm looking for. Alright, so this is a bad sign straight up. These white stickers, 639 stickers, they mean that the board's actually been refurbished before. At least to my understanding, and anyway, that is a 4924. So this board has already failed in the past. It's been refurbished, 
back to some sort of standard. I don't know what standard it is. It seems like, and there we go. There's the, what I was looking for. Bingo. All right, that's a very welcome sight to see. So we'll just take that whole chip off. I know we could probably revive that one, but honestly, being an ISL, you may as well just take the whole thing off. Make sure that all the traces are good all the way underside. And yeah, just replace it. Also going to take off the, I'm just taking off that plastic barrier that doesn't seem to stop a damn thing. Clock chip had a green dot. Um, I think I saw what you were talking about and I decided it wasn't actually a threat. There's that one there. That's a bit of junk. Yep, a bit of floaty junk. Okay, there's a bad spot there. So the capacitor's also got a bit of damage on it. So that will affect the 12 megahertz clock there. But I'm going to say that the ISL is the actual... fault fault. But the clock one would come into play probably a month or two's time. Alright, let's get repairing. Arnold G, you talking about the that cap with corrosion that I just referred to? I do hate that there is a lag in the communications. Which uh, we just had a lightning strike. Hopefully I'm still online. Seem to be. Now, because this board is actually pretty damn clean, I'm going to try my best to not have to ultrasonic it. And I'm miserably failing at that already. Flux to blow off that side. So this is why it's good to take the chip off. You see there's a corrosion that's actually underneath. It's not bad, but it is there. Because, I mean, you could have just gone along and, you know, used the micro pencil and scrubbed off those greeny looking bits. We 
resistor on the track looks a little golden. Uh, you're going to have to give me a number on that one. Most of these golden looking things are going to be caps. Next calf bottom right of the chip. Um, okay, you're talking about this one here. That probably could have actually turned golden simply because I was heating it. I really don't have any compelling reason to... I mean, I'll check it, but I don't have any compelling reason to believe it would giving me any trouble. Oh, clean up job just got worse. Come on, you mangy lead free. Okay. stick to the gospel of Jason Vilma here. Hey, any triple fives here? How's it going, any? Good to see you, of course, always. Okay, so the one cap that I can see that uh, one resistor, it's a one ohm resistor. Which, like I said, does not surprise me one bit given its size. And I'm pretty sure any of that sort of golden hue you're thinking of, it's a combination of the camera and probably the value, um, the fact that I use the hot air on it. This will probably come up at about 4 ohms. Yeah, 1.6, so that's fine, yeah. You're going to have to give me a number, Arnold. If you want to play, you got to give me the number. This is a 4924 board. And when I'm looking through the microscope, I can't see any golden-looking resistors. I mean, I'm very used to picking out burned resistors. And nothing on this is looking like it's like that. So you're going to have to convince me with a number. <laughs> Making your job harder because I don't want to make mine harder. I know, I should be grateful. You did get me the board view for the Dell that I didn't fix. But I, I'm like that, I'm an ungrateful person. Bottom row, side view. Damn it, who stole the ISL? That was a lovely looking board too, and someone nicked the ISL from it. Why? Why would they do that? And that one too. Oh, frickin' tragedy. Well, 
it's not the prettiest, but it will still love me. Hey Jim, what, what's Schultz? It's obviously a reference to something I'm not aware of. Is that the uh, soup Nazi? Please tell me it's a soup Nazi. Uh, pin one is top left, so that's good. Ah, uh, 7210, congratulations. Ah, uh, 7210. That one there. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, camera look. Ow. So, 316 ohms. That's a very specific value, that one. And there you go, smack on 316. Oh, Hogan's Heroes, right. My sister watched that a lot more than I did. At the time that she was watching that, I was more interested in watching um, Battle of the Planets, G Force, that kind of thing. You know, very interested in what Princess was doing, even though I didn't know why. Oh, you mongrel. Yeah, it's out of control. What is the matter with me? I'm just going to have to let that cool down so I can redo this. <laughs> someone's got too much flipping solder on there. There we go. And yes, it's massively out of alignment, but while it's got too much solder swimming under it, it's never going to... You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be one. Something's very wrong with me at the moment. No, no, take it off, Paul. Yeah, I know about the resistor up there. I have no idea why I was having such dramas there. Other than to say that I was. Fix up the resistor afterwards. No, it's still drifting out. Have I got the right chip on here?
Honestly, sometimes you wonder whether you pick up the wrong chip and it's like got a one pin less and you're trying to make it fit. I mean, look at that. That's a terrible. What happened here? Mr. Daniels. Nope, that's blind man special. I've got the wrong chip. Yeah, I've got the wrong chip. That's why. I picked up a 62659. Um, this is actually meant to be a 95826. That's why it's not sitting down right. Idiots. Uh, Stuart, if you get the right chip for the right job, then it's <laughs> it's probably a, a four, maybe. Yeah. I saw, oh my goodness. That was truly statically dumb. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there and I'm thinking, this really doesn't feel right. This, you know, it's not sitting down, it's not settling anywhere. It keeps drifting back and forth between, you know, multiple states. And that's because it was the wrong chip. And that's why I like stuck my head in there and I was like, hey, what's going on? And it says, yeah, try a different chip, buddy. Alright, well, I better get a 4924 for this. I could search for it in Flex Board View as well if I want. Is this a 4924? Well, probably not. But this is. Does it have the chip I want? You scaly little mongrel, you do not. And you don't on there either. Wow. <laughs> oh, you look disgusting. Huh? No, uh, can't use them. Alright, we're, we're going to do some flex board view searching now. Okay, so I want this ISL chip. Search, find a part. It's pretty much on everything. Yep, that's all I need to see. It's on the 165s and the 3437s. Stock standard sort of chip. So let's see if I want to know which one it is. buffed up but you're only up at the top so it's we'll accept you Mike's, uh. okay so that's on the 165 we'll take that one thank you that hair is annoying me Well, I'm glad I didn't force the issue with the chip. I should have known something was up because the center pad what had a uh, notch out of it like a pin one indicator notch 
about that. But when I pulled it from the ISL, it did not. Uh, the um, 6.2 series. And that should have been my warning sign. Oh no. Okay, my bad. I was thinking maybe that would have been my telltale, but in this case, it looks like the Apple design has just used a different footprint. Fine. Fine. Leave me high and dry like that, guys. Looks like I'm going to have to ultrasonic this damn board now. Too many mistakes. Let's have a look at the pins. Well, shock horror, they line up. <laughs> I'll add a bit more solder to them, they're a little bit sparse. Carlos, almost never. Um, most of the time, most of the time I'm using an oscilloscope as a s inappropriately used frequency counter. But as an actual oscilloscope, yeah, very rare. It's ever so slightly skewed off, but it's not so bad. Chances are, if I try to make it perfect, I'll actually make it worse. It's this sort of thing you'll learn to live with. Hey, you use it? This cap isn't even actually part of the clock circuit, it's something entirely different. Not sure what it's for. just that's just noise control that's so Apple can pass compliance for irradiated and noise and stuff like that we'll put it back on because we can hey Richard Holak Holyoke sorry uh, you use it, yeah, sorry, no info line. I probably should put it on. I'm not sure if it's running at the moment. Yep, it is. I do love being a programmer, there's no denying it. I love being able to go, I need something to do this, and go, wait, I'm the guy that can do that. It's quite a nice thing to have the power within your own hands to yeah, create things that you need. Now, if I never do that with money, so, oh, I need a hundred bucks. Shabam! Ah, 
the uh, earlier version of the board does not have that, the 3000 series. Oh, crikey. So only the 49 has it. Uh, Dave Underwood, the one I'm using fits that criterion. It's the, as long as they're a simul focal trinocular, you should be right. Almost all of them these days now do it properly like that. In the past, they sort of tried to lie their way through some weasel words to trick you into buying ones that would switch out. Uh, truffles, I use a, I've got a 22 litre ultrasonic tank. Uh, I know that sounds a little crazy, but believe me, you're grateful for it. I just had to give it a new lot of liquid today, which is a bit expensive here in Australia. It's about 50 bucks for me to fill it back up. Alrighty. I guess we're not really expecting any surprises. I mean, the damn thing was working. So for us at this point, the only way is down. But at least our assumption when it came in, because we knew the customer had sent it in saying it wasn't working and it turns up and it's all working, at least our assumption then that we would be looking for corrosion on the back or somewhere on it proved to be true once again okay it's in your glasses on Paul you'll be able to see uh, truffles it's a generic eBay brand I don't know if you'll be able to see it probably not mm. hang on there that's it there just random generic eBay type. Uh, the reason why the liquid is expensive is because I need to use, to fill up the tank, I need to use four litres of it. And, well, three litres I can get away with. And it's about 20 bucks per litre. So. And you have to replace. Ideally, you should probably. I should probably be replacing the tank every month, probably more every two weeks. In fact, and the water itself. I've got to buy. Uh, deionized water 
Thankfully I get that through the local vet clinic at a pretty good price. I know it sounds a bit weird getting it from a vet clinic, but because they do their own lab work there, they have a readily available supplier of it. So I just, every now and then, so I need another bucket of it, or another 20 litre container, and they just throw it on their next order for me. Dave, if you go to the tools page, it shows you there the stuff that I'm using and then you don't have to run around second guessing anything it's right there already checked and used okay we're going backwards we I oh know kind of helps if you turn the power ah uh, I know what happened there when we had that power strike it disabled the output of the power meter of the um yeah. I had a panic moment then. Okay, at this stage we're just gonna go through and test the functionality. Hey David, from Bonnie, Scotland. Oh, Bonnie's a town? Ah, that explains a few things. There's a lot of, uh, there's some music I listen to, like um, Lorena McKenna and stuff like that, and she speaks about this Bonnie, and now I understand. It's a town. Okay, Wi-Fi is good. Let's get the ENIAC 22. Once you start, are your hands unstable under the microscope? Have you already got a microscope? Because genuinely, I've got perfectly shaky hands, anxiety mostly. But once under the microscope, the feedback loop to your brain and hand becomes better and you don't really get the shakes as bad as what it seems if you have to try to do something freehand uh, without a microscope. Okay, let's see, CD, keyboard, tester. What's that? It just means pretty. Oh man, you're ruining everything for me. Oh well, I guess the bonnie swans are pretty. And the caps lock, escape. Okay, that's good. Oh yeah, yeah, Travis makes a good point. Don't practice on consumer customer devices, please. Not unless they've actually given you the clearer, you know, if if a customer brings you a device and you do not have practice on soldering and all that sort of stuff in general and you say to them look you know this could easily go south like I can make complete trash of it it's going to be a total write off and they're still okay with that then fine but if they're actually bringing it to you because you advertise yourself as doing a professional service and whatever and when really you're just actually uh, faking it until you make it then, you know, probably better not to do that. My first MacBook several, well, quite a few years ago now, uh, I think I denied the guy, must have been half a dozen times I denied the repair on him. And eventually he just said to me, he says, look, I really don't care if you ruin it or not. He says, I just want you to have a shot at it and, you know, see if I have any luck. And at that point, I didn't have a microscope. I didn't have the uh, fine tip soldering irons or anything like that. But I was very lucky that in my case, it was a one wire component that was only a little bit smaller than what I was normally used to soldering 
freehand with um, my existing surface mount gear. So I got lucky there. And then about, oh, probably must have been about nine months later, I finally did get a microscope and everything else. Uh, this seems to be all good. Let's see. Yep, that's fine. I should do that while I do this. Yeah, that's easier. Um, I would say this machine is good to go. We should be able to pull the power and battery is running fine. Yep. Well, at least we had one win. Which aimscape you got that's turned into goo? Mine's a full metal body one. I've heard rumours that there's new aimscopes that are made of plastic, which would be rather unfortunate. Oh, Travis, hope you have luck with it. I say it's good for the hot air wicking that you see me do. All right. Reminds me, I need to actually put the job information on this before I forget what I'm doing. You tell yourself, oh, I'll remember that when I get down to the other part of the house, you know, over the end of the workshop, and you do not. So, what is this job 526? Okay, use 7200, corrosion. Placed. Fifty twenty five C five eighty five corrosion replaced. Now that's fundamentally it. Oh, you actually like had a fire fire in the house. Oh, in that case, yeah, you're doomed. That's really unfortunate, in fact. I mean, they are... I think the heads are aluminium, aren't they? Or maybe some sort of magnesium cast. Either way, yeah, I can see they would melt. And yes, we have to take this board out because we have to clean it. can't leave judicious quantities of flux lying around. Oh, Tony, hell, I didn't realise that. That's rotten. Honestly, when it comes to insurance, I used to have myself very well covered with insurance, but in the last few years I figured, no, I'm just going to keep the cash in the bank, and if things go wrong, they go wrong, and I pay myself, you know, be my own insurance company because it just seems like you know most people will get done over by the insurance companies one way or another there's always some sort of weasel that works out how to deny your claim yeah I, th I think I'll ultrasonic this one damn it I really didn't want to, but looks like I'm going to have to. You got put out of business, man. That's rough. You can't get started again. I mean, like, yeah, what's it like about two and a half to five thousand dollars to get started again? Or is it just sort of just like kill the desire? Yeah, sometimes large events like that can just sap your willingness to bother investing again. And I mean, I totally get that. Mm. 
sometimes you take it as a sign of like, okay, time to move to a new venture for making money. I think I'll take up insurance selling. Sent you oh sweetie, right, okay. Oh yes please I'll have a toast. Uh oh right, tomato and cheese on toast. And uh with regards to that person asking, I already replied to them and told them no, I don't do it. But there is someone in Townsville who will and so I've sent them on their way. Didn't realise you're there, sweetie. <laughs> ah, put that in the wrong hole. I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. Uh, I don't think we'll be having toast here. I think it'll just it'll be toast. Well, all we've really got left to do tonight, um, I'll do that SMC reball, and that's about it. Oh, good, you got your flux. Any? Yeah, I've still got a couple of tubes in my order, thankfully. for tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll just, I did mention that I had sent her on to the next person. Uh, I sent you a message back on Facebook a little. I'm going to use your name so you actually take notice of what I'm t saying. That's when you know I'm serious. Okay, so this is a 165. It's one we pulled off a board because we weren't sure if the board was working or not, or the SMC was working or not. We didn't have a change in behavior, so we're assuming that this SMC is actually going to be okay. What have you done to your headphones, Alila? Crikey, you already blow the speakers out on the MacBook 1502. Now you, what have you done to your headphones? You're gonna have to upgrade you to something like, I don't know, something with power.
Dennis, she's actually got Sennheisers at the moment, and I've got another set of Sennheisers that I might try for her. We generally only use Sennheiser in this house, so far as consumer headphones go. Yeah, this is a really disgusting looking SMC. That's because I let it float around in the crud. This should already be all leaded solder, so hopefully I don't have to do too much work on this one. got to clean out all that flux we don't want it bobbling up and messing with our reflow you can have a little bit there but you really want to try and reduce it as much as possible because it does very effectively wick up along the side of the chip when it's getting hot yeah that's good enough Put more junk on there. Oh, I see everybody's getting excited. Bring out the old audio file talk and people lose their heads. Okay, 20 air, 350 temperature should be good. Okay, so we just got to put our two little corner shots in. So we've got holder for the stencil. It doesn't matter that that one's off there. Right. It really, really, really does not matter. Because the only purpose of... Ah, oh, I've got a piece of junk in there. The only purpose of those initial ones is just simply to give us a stencil alignment. But what we don't need is junk on the stencil. Yeah, so it just lets us hold the stencil in place while I'm doing what I've got to do. Alright, let me put our IPA on. Pour down some roughly enough balls. That's probably a bit mini, but oh well. And we just gently rub until the stencil is satisfied with what it's got there. We've got one missing. Uh, two missing. Uh, uh, uh. Wait, is it? Yeah, there. Yep, that's all good. Uh, Steve, was it damaged or was it just junk? Alright, 
Alright, that's hot enough now for me to do what I gotta do. Looks like I've picked up a ball annoyingly. Probably put a bit too much flux on there, and you can see a couple of them were wanting to become. Yeah, this is what happens when you put down too much flux. Well, we'll find out if it was damaged or not shortly. Hey, sweetie. Alright, I'll just wash my hands, eh? Sorry. I love juice. Paper towel, dry off. Thank you. Nice. Now uh, this is just Australian um, cheddar. It's mature cheddar, but it's Australian. And it's a decent sized juice box. Certainly, it's a nice, um, it's a nice vegetarian type meal. Mm, not quite sure what it is. Actually, I think it's basil. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's basil. Hey, Ron, good night. Sorry, Ron, I haven't had a chance to catch up with you lately, so I'll be able to send you an email. Margarita? Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Well, good thing we got the SMC done when we did. The only thing this is missing is cracked pepper. And that's because we haven't <laughs> we ran out. We've got more on order, it just hasn't arrived yet. Seriously? Didn't know what basil was? Okay. Yeah, usually you have like basil and oregano with uh, Italian food and stuff like that. <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm almost done anyway, and it's fine. Sorry, just talking to a leader. Hmm. I'm completely wrong. It's actually parsley. My goodness, I can't believe I thought that was basil. I think it's because it's got um, onion powder on it. And sort of through my senses. But it's parsley. It's always good when you get top of the season tomatoes as the ones that have got that really fresh burst, slight um, sort of acid tang. Not, uh, you yeah, know, they haven't started to de degenerate in that powdery sort of anything like that. Usually the ones that are about golf ball size, they can be absolutely spectacular. It was the onion powder that was throwing me with the basil and the parsley. Tomatoes are pretty good. Definitely get better, but for generic store bought type thing, they're perfectly good. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Alita. Pretty much all we have to do here now is just check that SMC and bag it and tag it, really. And that looks pretty much perfect to me. 
I don't see any problems with it. I'll just have to heat it up a little bit so that I can wash that flux off. I don't think where my toothbrush went to. Damn it, need that toothbrush. Ah, there it is. Sutterbridge, why only three out of what? What sort of lousy judge are you? You're one of those Olympic scorer people that when everyone else is given a 10, you decide, nah, stuff it, I'm going to give you a 2 because I feel all jaded. People shouldn't get 10s. Is that, is that how we're playing it? I think I'm going to be able to see that when it comes to yeah, that's visible enough. Yep, I can read that as one six five. See if Jim's camera can. Yep, yeah, Jim's camera can read it as one six five, so that's good enough for me. Carlos 165 means it's for an 8200165 MacBook Air board. So, um, so one of these type, well, this is a 3437. And on the back, you know, every one of these boards has an SMC on it, a system management controller. But you can't take, um, you can't mix and match system management controllers between boards as a general rule. So, if you need to replace one off a 3437 board, it has to be from another 3437. And so this one here came from a 165 board, so I've marked it 165, so I know that if I need one, I've got one there. So the trouble is, if you don't mark them, when you take them off, they actually all look very much the same. You can't tell what the what board they're meant for once you take them off the board and you've forgotten where it came from. So that's why you got to mark them. I don't have a white pen. Um, not a white pen that's going to be that fine. And I can read that just fine anyway. Maybe I should make this to be my SMC box. I've got quite a few other SMCs. And they're all in little zippy bags. Oh, that's so nice. Nope. What about you? Yep, 
Yes, indeed. Sort of fills the place of being an enemy quite nicely. So these are the new ones. You can now buy from AliExpress if you ask. You can get SMCs pulled from specific boards. But I still don't trust them. Okay, so is this 34, 37? This is another 165. Let's stick it in here. Random bits and pieces, I'll never... Another 3437. Trouble is, 3437's i got plenty of. It's the 165's that you almost always are running short on. And so you end up with this col colossal pile of uh, donor boards with only one chip missing, and that is the SMC. Uh, Alright, let's pack that away. We're done for tonight. That is the end of the show. At least we did manage to get one machine up and running. Um, the... What was it? The... 1425 is not playing ball with me. I don't know what to think. And to be honest, it's actually cheaper. I was checking on AliExpress. It's cheaper for me to just go and buy a whole new uh, board for the... 1425 than it is to even service it so I might just do that instead it just it's, it makes business sense and then I get the board replace it customers happy I have to stuff around and then I'll have myself a donor board 1425 if need be so all right I am out of here thank you very much for everyone for sticking around what did we go for well we just went over the two hour mark which is unfortunate but these things happen I will catch you all the next time. I don't know what's coming in tomorrow, but uh, most of what I've got left here really is just a case of marking it off as cannot fix and you know, cleaning it, packing it and shipping it and dealing with the people sort of asking me, can you please try? And it's like I have been trying for ages and I just can't fix it. So anyway, I'm out of here. You all take care. Until the next time, I'll catch you later.